Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day eight of the Simplify Your Life Challenge for 2022. This challenge is based on an ebook by YouTuber Michelle B, which will be linked down below. And if you are new and you want to start from the beginning, there's a playlist that I will link on the screen up here. And with that, let's get started on day eight, which is decluttering our makeup. So we skipped ahead in the ebook. So if you're following along, I think this is listed as day 10 because I skipped two things in between electronics and kitchen. So we're gonna circle back around, but this is day slash week eight. This is a big one for me. If you've been here for a while, you know that I started out sort of sometimes doing makeup and beauty videos. Not always, it was whatever I felt like, but there were quite a few videos of me buying a whole bunch of makeup because during 2020, I just started watching a whole bunch of beauty YouTubers and makeup videos. And then I got enabled all the time and was like, I want that. I want that. I want that. And bought a bunch of it. And I just had a whole bunch of videos in a row of my multiple boxes of orders from Sephora and Ulta. So <laughs> it was a little out of control. I still like it. I'm not going to be one of those people that has one palette and one foundation and one set of everything and just uses the same thing every day. I'm not, I still really like eyeshadows. I like different looks. I like to have different things. I like to have options. I do actually need a winter foundation and a summer foundation and a lighter weight foundation. So I'm never going to be the sort of person that has one set of things, but I still have too much. And I still have a lot of products or things that I don't use or things I bought and used a few times and don't love and wouldn't buy again. So those things are things that can go. And I need to let go of this idea that, especially for things I can't really resell because there are some places that you can resell or re-give like eyeshadow palettes and things like that that are easy to sanitize, but there are things with wands or brushes or whatever that you can't. And I need to let go of this idea that I need to use it up, especially things that were drugstore that don't really cost a ton of money. Like I have this Revolution concealer that I think was $6 maybe, and I hate it. And I just keep using it because I was like, well, I bought it. I don't want to throw it out. Okay, that's true and I don't want to waste it. And once again, all of this stuff has to go to hazardous waste and it's another bag of stuff I took over there to get rid of. But it was an important lesson that I need to better understand my skin and my face and what I want and what I need before I just buy six concealers to try them. Because if you don't like it, you're stuck with it or you have to waste it. It's a tricky thing business buying makeup because you don't always know if you're going to like a new thing, but you also don't always want to just use the same thing all the time. So there's a little bit of a balancing act and I haven't figured it out yet. And I don't know that I'm going to figure it out anytime soon, but for now, let's work through the steps. And of course, the first one is to create your guiding questions. So here are mine. Is this expired or out of date? This one's a little difficult because a lot of things have a little printed date that say six months or 12 months or 18 months or whatever on them. But I'm always a little bit confused of like, if it's not open, how do you measure that? Is it from the day it was made? Because there's no day it was made on it. Is it from opening? Like if I had something sitting in my shelf for two years, but it hasn't been open, but it says it's only good for 12 months. Is that expired? I usually count it as has this been open for six months and go from there, but I don't know if that's right. So if you know how that little rating system works, let me know because I'm probably doing it wrong. I don't have any idea. And truthfully, I mostly ignore expiration dates on makeup, which is so bad. I've probably had one of my eyeshadow palettes for 20 years. That's so awful. Nowhere does the sunk cost fallacy and also the I don't want to waste this 
come into play with me as much as it does with makeup. I bought this and it was so special to me when I bought it and I saved up all this money because it was expensive and I didn't have that much money at the time. And it was the coolest thing I'd ever owned and it was the first thing I bought that wasn't drugstore makeup and I just want to use it up. But it's like 20 years old and it's hit pan on a lot of shades, don't get me wrong, but probably shouldn't still be putting that on my eyes. I was. It's kind of gross if you think about it. Anyway, I'm not sure how to feel, but I do get attached to things. And I, I do think it's a combination of, I spent a lot of money on this and I really wanted it when I got it, but the only thing you can do is throw this away and that's wasteful. It really just means a cautionary tale in not buying too much makeup. So with this, I have set myself a hard rule that if I have had something for more than five years, open or not open, it's going away. Getting rid of it. I'm just going to dump it in the hazardous waste bin. That's what's happening. It doesn't need to be used. It doesn't need to get used. If I've had it for five years, I'm not going to use it. Just get it out of here and lesson learned. Do I enjoy using this? So it's, do I enjoy the looks I create with this? Do I like the ease of use? Do I like how it wears on me? Do I like how it looks on me? And if the answer is no on all counts, then I don't need it. Possibly if it's no on one count, I don't need it. Like if I'm like, hey, I really like the looks I can make with this and it's good for my skin, but it's super hard to use. You're probably not going to use it that much. If you don't like the looks it creates, but it's easy to use and it's good on your skin, are you going to use it that much? I feel like if one of those things is missing, it's a no, because you're going to always find something that works in all three categories for the most part. Would I buy this again? This one and the one before are related. Like if I was standing in a store right now and I saw this thing and mine was out, would I purchase it or would I purchase something else? That's a big question. If yes, then definitely keep it. If no, it's not a hard no. If I'm like, it's fine, but I wouldn't repurchase it. I don't think that's automatic grounds for getting rid of it. I think it's an if it doesn't meet one of the above criteria of I like the way it looks, it's easy to use, or it works with my skin type, then I could say, eh, I don't think I'd rebuy this. I have a lot of concealers, but I don't like any of them. So if I get rid of all of them, I won't have any, and then I'll have to start all over again. It flows into the next question. Do I have something similar that I like better? Basically, if you have duplicates of a thing that doesn't need to have duplicates, I'm not saying only have one eyeshadow palette. I'm saying maybe only have like one neutral eyeshadow palette, because do you need six different palettes that all have the same look? Probably not. So when it comes to things like eye shadows and colors and things like that, then it's, do you need more than one of this color? And basically pick the best one. Concealer, pick the best one. Foundations, pick the best few because you like to have options. Weather is a factor, especially here. Which is my favorite neutrals eyeshadow palette? Which is my favorite eyeshadow palette with this color scheme? Which blush do I like the best? Which highlighters do I like the best? You can have a few of those too. Not as many as I have, but a few. Those are the important questions. Just like, is there something I like better than the one that I'm holding? And if yes, maybe keep that one and get rid of this one. Have I used this more than five times in the last year? If the answer's no, again, it's not an automatic get rid of this because there's a lot of things I haven't used more than five times in the last year, and it's because I have 20 eyeshadow palettes, so I didn't use them more than five times. I'm counting five times as a week of usage because I pick my palette for the week at the beginning of the week, and then I just rock that one the whole week so I don't have to make all those decisions in the morning. Same with foundation. It's basically everything. I pack my whole bag on Sunday, and then it's ready to go for the week. So did I use this for more than five weeks of the year? And a lot of times it's going to be no, just because I had so many things that I didn't. But if there are some that I was like, yeah, I didn't really use this at all. 
I used it a couple times, but not really, maybe twice, then it's a consideration of whether I want that one or not, or if, you know, I just didn't use it because I was trying to use up older ones, which is the thing I do. So it's a check, but it's not an automatic. I'm not keeping this because I don't even use it because some things I don't use them, but I like them. Is this in good condition? If no, you can probably get rid of it. I have an eyeshadow palette that I got from Jonas that came with three of the shadows broken. So you have to store it flat because if you store it up, it all falls out of those colors and it's just kind of a pain to use. And I don't know, it's a nice palette, but it being broken really takes down your level of enjoyment. Things like eyeliners, right? Are they dried up, then get rid of them? Concealers, are they dried up or the wands broken? Mascara wands, things like that. If they're not in good condition, then don't keep them. Keep things that work and are good. So those are my questions. And after that, take everything out, including brushes and makeup tools and things like that. And we go through all of it. We reference our questions, lay it all out, look at it, see if it's what we want, see what we want to keep, see what we don't want to keep, sort the rest. I will sort mine into hazardous waste because Makeup is chemicals, let's be real, and it has to go to hazardous waste. Recycling, if it's just packaging or other things that can get recycled. This is another one where TerraCycle has a beauty products recycling waste stream. So a lot of the packaging that can't go in your household recycling, you can give to TerraCycle in that waste stream and they will recycle it for you. So I really recommend looking into that. I'll put a link down below to that. I send a lot of things there. We just have a box that we throw empty stuff in, especially packaging that won't go in the city recycling. So that's useful. And then I'm going to have another box for things that we can try to resell. Glambot is a really good option for some brands. They don't take drugstore stuff and they won't take anything with a reusable applicator unless you are a makeup artist or you work in the makeup industry. So be aware of that. But eyeshadow palettes, blushes, highlighters, things like that, they love and they will take them as long as they are more than 50% filled. So if you have something that you're like, I hardly use this, but it's perfectly usable, don't throw it out just send it to Glambot. You also can sell things on eBay and I think Mercari and other resale sites that are used. I would recommend sanitizing it all first. So just spray it down with isopropyl alcohol. We've all got isopropyl alcohol sitting around our houses these days, right? What I like to do, it'll actually fix a broken eyeshadow too, kind of, depending on how broken it is. But eyeshadows and blush and powder highlighters basically, you can take a dropper, like a little squeezy dropper, and drip isopropyl into the pan on top and it'll just evaporate in, but sanitize that eyeshadow. It's really useful. I've done that before where I was like, hey, this is fully sanitized. You can still sanitize it on your own, but I've resold things that were gently used like that before and it was super easy. You can also look at Project Beauty Share in the US, which will take not everything, but a lot of things. They don't have brand restrictions, so you can send them anything. They want it to really truly be barely used or new though. So if something's got a noticeable dent or something's hit pan or something, they're, they don't really want it. What they do is they give it to people in shelter situations, homeless shelters and other institutional situations who are just looking to get out and just wanna have nice things. Like they deserve to have makeup and feel good and all of that. And so they give people in shelters and domestic abuse situations these think up that they can have and feel good about themselves and play with it and use it and just live a regular life, right? I recommend them. I will put both Glambot and Project Beauty Share in the down bar. Look into places you can donate or places you can sell before throwing out, obviously. But if it needs to be thrown out, throw it out. Think about why 
you are throwing it out, and then try to avoid just buying makeup to buy makeup so that you don't put yourself back into a situation where you have to throw everything out. And if you do buy something on a whim and you use it twice and you hate it, just set it aside to send to Glambot, to Project Beauty Share, to some other site, something. Don't just keep it around and try to keep using it like I do. Just say, hey, this isn't for me. I'm going to put it over here. Does somebody want this or can I send it somewhere? And then it doesn't have to be five years later and it ends up in the trash. After you're done with that, it's time to store everything that you're keeping. And it's really important that you try as much as possible to store it all in one place. I got some really nice organizers last year from the containers. We'll see it in the video when I show you the footage of me going through all of my stuff. There's two drawers and then there's a system on top where I have a place in the back and foundations can go. My eyeshadow palettes are in a little rack on the side. You'll see it. I really recommend that system. It's been really great and it's modular and you can customize it to your needs. I think it's important as much as you can to store things vertically again because they take up less space. If you want the one in the middle you have to move the whole stack and get the one out of the middle and put them back. It's really nice to just have them laid out vertically that you can look and say, oh, I want this one. So I recommend that if possible, keep your stuff somewhere, not the bathroom. The bathroom's a really humid environment and it's constantly wet and hot and, and all of that affects your makeup. I moved all of mine last year out of the bathroom into the linen closet. I realize not everyone has that much space and sometimes you just have to keep it in the bathroom. If possible, keep it in a cabinet that's closed or a drawer or something out of the open air so it's not picking up all of the humidity and grossness of your bathroom. But, you know, do what you gotta do. Not everyone has the space to keep it separate. Also, store things in the order that you reach for them. Make them easy to access and easy to put away and easy to get at and so you'll keep it organized and you'll keep it neat and you'll know what you have and you'll use it. All right, so then you discard, sell, or donate the rest and that is what we are going to do now. So stay tuned. This is going to be a long one. I do actually do a lot of talking about the individual products. Hopefully that's okay. I know people like watching makeup declutter videos, so I'm hoping that it's not super long and that you're willing to hang in there with me. But if not, you know, you can skip that part and skip to the last five minutes at the end where I do a wrap up if you want to. All right, I will talk to you at the end after the whole declutter. Y'all want to see a mess? <laughs> hey. So, uh, we're dealing with, well, we're dealing with this stuff, but we're dealing with this mostly. Um, and then the shelf today, and then we'll hit like that business and that tomorrow. So, uh, and then, oh, this goes with today, sort of, mostly, kind of. We got our work cut out for us. Let's go. So here we go. I didn't take the nail polish out because this is already a lot and I just need to sort this bit by bit. This is like foundation and then that's perfumes and that's lip products. This is some extra stuff that was behind. This drawer is mostly backup stuff, right? Yeah, okay. This stuff on top of here is all the stuff that was in my makeup bag from what I was using. This is stuff that's mostly is in regular rotation, but not all of it. Some of the backups are in here because the backup drawer got too full. This is eyeliner that's not in the drawers. Setting spray. Here are my eyeshadow and eyeshadow palettes. Let me just give you some perspective on the size of that stack. Yep. Uh, so we're going to sort through this and I will pop in and talk with you and give you my thoughts on some of it and, um, let's see what we can do about this. This one's going to be hard because I genuinely like most of this stuff that I use, um, which is to say the eyeshadow palettes. So here we go. <laughs> 
The drawer of backup stuff goes on the bottom, so we're gonna start with that. It's interesting because the questions are less applicable to things I haven't used. A lot of this is stuff that I bought because I'm trying to find the thing that I like for most of these categories, so it's hard to pick up one thing at a time, right? And test it and then you hate it and then you get a new thing and you think maybe I'll use this, but then you wanna use up the old thing. So um, this backup store is going to get weird when it comes to the questions of like, do I like this? Because I don't know. And have I used this? Well, no, I haven't. It's not even open. Am I going to? Yeah. Am I gonna like it? Still don't know. Do I have a thing that I like that it does better? Maybe. We'll see how we go. There's things like eyelashes, right? False eyelashes. I tried. I've tried so many times and I love the way they look on people and I love the way they look on me, but I'm very bad at putting them on and they upset my eyes and I just don't wear them as much as I think I'm going to wear them. So that's one category where I'm like, you can probably just trash all that stuff, okay? There we go. <laughs> There's some I might keep because the Nikia Joy ones, her claims are that hers are easier to wear than other brands um, and just don't irritate your eyes as much. So. I'm hanging on to hers just to see if that's true, but honestly, I just need to put them on and I don't because every time I've put on eyelashes, it's been two hours and I'm like, get them off of my face. And so I have two of these. I'm currently using one of these brow pencils and I'm trying to remember if I bought another one because I liked it or if I bought this because I wanted to try it and then I forgot that I bought it. And then later on when I was at the store, I thought I need a new eyebrow pencil and then I bought one. Probably the latter. That's great. Somehow I'm down to only having three mascara backups. I use them for three months at a time. And that basically means that with the one I have now and these three, this is a whole year of mascara, which is great because they expire in six months. I don't know. I've never been clear on if that's six months from whenever or six months from when they're open. None of these have ever been opened. There's this Mile High Club from Wander that I got in a, probably a birch box that I've never used. I don't actually think I want to use this mascara. Put that in this bag too. This one is from Ilya and I do want to try this and this one is Elf and I just bought this and I do want to try that too. But I'm pretty sure the Bite Mascara and I are going to be BFFs, so. These are here because I'm curious if they're better than the Bite one, but currently that Bite Mascara has replaced all others in my, I love this. This one has the Hourglass brush, the Elf one, so that's why I bought it because I love an Hourglass brush. So if the Elf one is as good as the Bite one, It'll save me a lot of money. How many unopened concealers does a person need? And I bought the Fast Base Concealer from Revolution because I really like the Fast Base foundation sticks. And I bought the Fenty Bright Fix because the applicator, the plasticky applicator on this intrigued me. I'm almost out of one of my concealers, which can go. And then there's the other Revolution one that I have that frankly I hate and I don't need to keep using it. Lots of eyeliner. This is a black liquid eyeliner from BH that they sent me on accident. I didn't even order it. They just sent me the wrong thing because they do that all the time. This is one from Aesthetica, which is a sample size and I probably also got in like a FabFitFun or a Birchbox. I don't even know when. I don't know. I assume it's liquid eyeliner. I think so. Yeah. Oh, it's one of the paint on kinds. I haven't tried this. It might be great. It might not, I don't know. It's uh, the Revolution one I had like this was pretty cool, but I don't know. We'll try it, I guess. I, I currently just tossed out a couple old dried out liquid eyeliners. Like this one right here, this is one of my favorites. This is the Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. I've played whole tennis matches in very high heat, like, 35 Celsius, 90s, high 90s Fahrenheit and humidity. Didn't budge. Did not move off of my face. It's wet and wild. It's like $3 from the drugstore. Highly recommended. Anyway, it's dried out now and I have to get rid of it. And honestly, I'm probably gonna buy a new one 
because I like it a lot. This is the Power Pencil Trio from BH. I love these BH Power Pencils. They're not liquid, they're actual pencils. I have the silver one. I use it on the regular. They're very intense and I like them. This is the e.l.f. retractable eyeliner no budge that I'm using. I think actually Jonas had it and gave it to me because they didn't like it. There's not much left. I'm just gonna use it up. <sighs> I didn't even know this was still in here. I just saved this to make myself sad, I think. ColourPop DTLA, the best dark blue black eyeliner, cream gel liner that I've ever had. I have its liquid equivalent on right now, the Sears UI, which is fine. It's not this though. It's not DTLA, nothing is DTLA. This is my backup of an eyeshadow palette that you all see and I purposely ordered it from Ulta because I could not fathom a time in my life that I would be without this eyeshadow, so. You know, probably by the time I get around to using up the other one, this one will be very old. And also like, there's probably another eyeshadow that color that you can get. Do I need two of the exact same Fenty matchsticks trios? I bought a backup. Yeah, because they stopped making these. I love these. This is the MAC Studio Fix Sculpt and Shape Contour, and this is the Revolution Ultra Contour Kit. Same thing. This one's cheaper, this one's better. And also, this one's old and almost all gone and kind of mostly broken, so it goes in the trash. This one. It's lovely and it comes with highlighters. This is the NYX Wonder Stick. It's a cream contour. It's a very similar idea to the Fenty, but I like the Fenty one better um, and this is almost gone anyway. So I'm just going to like break these off of here, I think, and then I can recycle the packaging. Maybe, oh, that was gross. I have some regrets. I'm now down to one cream and one powder. Exciting. This is also a Fenty Match Stick, but it's orangey, so I use it as my under eye concealer. Good stuff, highly recommend. Concealers. Let's be real, this L'Oreal one's almost gone, so there she goes. This Revolution one sucks and I hate it. I feel like I use this a lot and I hate it every time and it will never be gone, but this Too Faced one is like half gone. This actually is really good concealer. I'm trying to use it up because I don't buy Too Faced anymore. This is the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer. I don't really truly like it very much. I think you have to have an actual skin temperature in order for this to work. It's almost gone and I've been using it, but in reality, I think I'm just gonna trash this and then use Chara Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base. Okay. I've been jamming on this e.l.f instant lift brow pencil. One of the reasons I bought this is it's one of the only eye pencils I can actually find in blonde. Like Revolution says their stuff comes in blonde and it does because I have one right here. This is the pomade, which I love their brow pomade, but you can't find it in blonde in the store. You can only find it in blonde if you order it on the internet, which my sister did. And now I have that one. But uh, as you saw, I have a backup of this, whether I purchased it before I purchased this or after, I don't know. I'm guessing it was before, but I like this. It's on right now, so we'll keep we'll keep rocking it. I have a lot of primers. So here's the thing. If I have a silicone-based foundation, I need a silicone-based primer. I have this one, which my esthetician gave me. It's fine. I don't love it, but it does work really, really well with any silicone-based foundations I have. I also have the Revolution Hydrate and Prime Primer which is water-based. So this one is what I use under any water-based foundations. So the fast base foundation that I like from them. Also the ColourPop Pretty Fresh, which has its own primer, which I have a sample of right here. I'm not sure if I have an opinion uh, between these two. It's really just, I can usually get this one at the drugstore and I have to order this one from ColourPop. I don't know if you can get this at Ulta, actually. I should look. The Pretty Fresh Primer's really new. This one's interesting because it's water and silicone. I'm not sure how it'll act with foundations. So this is the NYX Bear With Me Cannabis Sativa Seed Oil, which I hear is really good, but 
also seems unnecessary when I currently have one half full primer that's a silicone base, one new one from Revolution that I'm trying to try, and then both of these two, which are the water-based ones. And I don't really know that I'm keeping that much silicone-based foundation. I really want to try this, but I also think I'm just going to get rid of it and try this Revolution one instead. And then if it comes back around that I'm in need of a primer at some point, I will go back to this NYX one. I have two blushes. I have a pink one from Becca and I have this orange one, Phase Zero, which I definitely got in some subscription box. I actually wear this a lot, but I kind of alternate. It depends on what look you're going for, whether you want this cool toned orangey, which I hear is really similar to the NARS blush. Um, I've never used the NARS blush, but I hear it's similar. Or if you want this pink tone. So it's actually kind of nice to have both of these around. I'm gonna keep them both. I don't particularly love or have feelings either way about either of them, but I've never had a blush that I was like, this is the greatest blush I've ever owned in my entire life. They just are to me. I have one setting powder. I only ever will have one setting powder. I will have one setting powder for the rest of my life. Nikia Joy Cosmetics Velvet Finishing Powder. All of this is highlighter. What is wrong with me? This is the ColourPop Light Sticks. It's fine. I don't have positive feelings about this, but I also don't have negative feelings about this. So I don't know if I should keep that or not. I actually really like this stuff. This is the Beauty Crop Glow Milk. Put it on kind of underneath other things. This is about half gone. I had a second backup of this that I put to get rid of. I think I'm gonna use this until it's gone. It's a nice color and I actually really like the subtle glow that you can get with it. So that can stay. This is the ColourPop Legit AF trio of super shock highlighters. I liked the idea of this when I bought it. I don't know that I actually like the super shock formula. It's just hard to use. Basically the light sticks are a lot easier for me to use because this is a cream to powdery formula, but it's really hard to get out of here and onto my face. And the pink one's nice. The brownie ones are not the greatest color for me. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of these as well. I liked them when I bought them, but I don't think I love them a lot right now. This is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. I did not like this when I first got it. The more I use this, the more I love it. It gives this very subtle shine to the skin that I really truly enjoy. This is not an in your face highlighter, which I think is why I didn't like it at first, but I've really grown to like this a lot. That stays. In the opposite land, this Ciate London is an in your face highlighter. And I've also grown to love that as an in your face highlighter. It's not the best color for me. It's definitely brown instead of what I prefer in silver and pink. But because of that, it's a little bit more subtle. It's not so very in your face. I use it a lot. I don't know if I love it, but I use it a lot. I'm not sure what to do with this one. It's too used for Project Beauty Share, but if Glambot will take it, then I can probably put it in the Glambot pile. All right, they will not take Ciate, so I'm gonna keep this. This is the Too Faced Love Light. Jonas went out of their way to get me this, and it's a nice rose gold pink tone. I don't use it as much as I thought I would, so I'm not sure how to feel. Glambot will take Too Faced. I'm gonna put it over there. These two highlighter palettes, they will also take. This Anastasia Beverly Hills one that I got because I liked the name of it and because I thought it was supposed to be never ending story themed. It's called the Moonchild Glow Kit, but then it's just like named after Lucky Charms marshmallows. It's barely used. I think I've only used this like four times tops um, and I still have the box for it. So that I'm getting rid of because 
I don't actually like it as much as I thought I would. This is the BH Illuminating in Ireland. This is so very bright and in your face in terms of highlight. It's nice to have a highlight palette in a way because then you can pick your own colors and not just be like, oh, I just have one highlighter for this week. But I don't know if I need to keep this. I don't use it nearly as often as I just use the single highlighters. So I like this a lot, but I'm gonna put it in here and I may change my mind. That leaves us with three primers, two contour kits, one concealer, one mascara. This is active use. I still have all the other stuff, so I have more of these obs. One brow pencil, one eyeshadow primer base, two blushes, this under eye concealer, two liquid highlights, two powder highlights, and a setting powder and setting spray. This is my current setting spray, Hyaluronic Fix. I also have a sport fix, which I like in the summer. We'll put that in the backups tray. So this is it. This is my current non eyeshadow, anyway. In use, rotational makeup. I haven't put eyeliners in there because that's a problem we need to address right about now. I have this Tokidoki eyeliner kit. I bought it so long ago that I cannot tell you when I bought it. It's definitely over five years old. They're sparkle eyeliners and I really like them. And I do still use them, but I probably shouldn't because they're very old and they go next to my eye. I have this that I got in a birch box. It's a weird color. It's like red brown. I don't really like it or use it. So the trash with that. This is the Silver BH Power Pencil, you stay. This is a green of the Tokidoki. I just bought a separate green one because I was really into green eyeliner at the time. This is also very old. It's my only other non-liquid blue eyeliner, which is sad because I actually wore blue eyeliner a lot, but absolutely more than five years old. This is its matching white eyeliner friend. This is ColourPop liquid liner in CRZY. This is a Lord and Berry. I got this in a birch box too. It's like a, they call it a strobing pencil. It's supposed to be for a highlight in your waterline. Don't really use that either. Why do I keep the boxes? What is wrong with me? So right now I have one non-liquid black eyeliner, one silver eyeliner pencil, one liquid blue eyeliner. This is the older one, I think. The Aesthetica Liquid Black Liner. We'll take that out and see how we feel about it. That's what I have for eyeliner and the Power Pencil Trio. So this is what we have. It's still a lot, but it's way less a lot. That is a manageable amount of everyday makeup. Liquid lipsticks, the stick lipsticks, and bullet lipsticks, and then lip liners and lip gloss. Here's why this is gonna be easy. Because I don't like lip gloss. I don't actually wear lip liner and I'm starting to fall out of love with liquid lipsticks. So, the BH ones are admittedly nicer than the Anastasia Beverly Hills ones that they're trying to dupe. I just don't really like it. I don't mind the matte drying factor of liquid lipsticks. That doesn't bother me. I just, Every time I eat something, they like crumble up and then I have to take off my whole lipstick and then I have to reapply and that's a pain for me and I don't want to do it. I don't know why I bought all of these like, they're not pinky nudes. They're like foundation lips and <laughs> pink nudes. They don't look good. Um, so those are going. This one is actually really comfortable. This is the BH Cashmere Cream. It's also a weird, gray brown color so i don't wear it very much because it doesn't look very good on me but the bh cashmere cream for a liquid lipstick is very comfortable it doesn't dry it's very cream formula but it still stays on i have a really hard time keeping cream formula lipsticks on my mouth this one stays on very well and i recommend it i just don't like the color these nyx soft matte lip creams are very good they're just very old <laughs> so those can go laura geller 50 kisses lip locking lip color i got this in a birch box and it's amazing it's really old now though i think it's clumpy and should be thrown out this is another bh liquid lipstick i dig this color it's pretty similar to the one i just had although it's a little more brown tone than pink and this one doesn't really have that problem where it grits up 
as much as the other ones do. I don't remember what style this is. It's definitely BH and it just says lipstick, so I don't know. I'm gonna keep this one. I actually do wear that one. Same thing with this. This is the ColourPop Lux Liquid Lip. This is Phoebus. It's from the Disney Midnight Masquerade collection. It needs a little stirring, but it's a really pretty berry color and I don't have anything else this color really. This is Too Faced Melted Matte. I love this formula and I love this red and I love that it's called Lady Balls and that's enough for me to keep it. Here's another BH liquid lipstick that they sent me on accident. I have many of these BH liquid lipsticks because I ordered something else and instead of sending me what I ordered, they sent me a lipstick. In a lot of cases, it's an eyeshadow palette. This is also a pretty red color. I've never used this. Like, it's still new in box, so it too can go to Glambot. I'm not even gonna take it out of there because I don't want them to be like, this has been used and we won't accept it. I've never used it. I've never even opened that. These are from Jonas. Jonas did a mystery grab bag of Gerard Cosmetics and then hated everything and gave it to me. It's called Metal Matte Double Shot. I've never used it, but Glambot won't take it because I think we've taken it out of the package and so it's over the side so they'll say it's used. I think I can try to sell it on Poshmark because I've, I've never even swatched it but it looks used, if that makes sense. It's not, ooh, this is a pretty color. It's not a whole lot different than this color. This is actually really similar to this Laura Geller one. Supreme Lip Cream in Wild Berry Tart. This I will use, I think. I'm gonna move on to lip glosses. I hate them, I don't like them. This is Floss, my new favorite lip gloss in Yule. Jonas had this stuff and was like, oh, it's really sticky, which means I'm gonna hate it. I just don't do lip gloss. My lips are not dry at all. And mostly I think of lip gloss as a waste of time and money because I put it on, it vanishes off of my mouth in 0.5 seconds. And when it doesn't, it's just really sticky and then my hair gets stuck in it. It's not worth it to me, mostly. So that's gone. Oh, this Winky Lux. I tried to like this Winky Lux. It's supposed to be a universal shade and look good on everyone, and it's just bubblegum pink on me, which is horrible. Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme. I was using this for a while, and then I stopped. I actually like it. The first time I used it, I did, in fact, think I might actually be dying. But the second and third times, it gets a lot better. It's expired. It's past the 12 month date. This Lorac and this Disney Villains, they're basically the same color. And this one goes with a set that I have. So I'm going to keep this one and I'm going to get rid of the Lorac. This is also from a set. This is from the Disney designer collection. This is Magic Mirror from the Snow White set. You'll see it right here. Villain and Princess. I have Snow White and Evil Queen. Um, and those go with those. I could put them with their sets and I probably should put them with their sets, but those can hang out there for now. This is technically a lip gloss, but it's also technically a lip color. So this is the Revolution Pout Bomb. It's also a lip injection thingy. It's tingly. If I want the plumping lip injection, I will just use this. It's a really pretty peach color, actually. I like it a lot. This is Too Faced. This is from the Pretty Rich collection, which I have the eyeshadows to go with. I was actually wearing this in the intro to the challenge, and then day one and day two, I had this on. So let's see what that looks like. I actually do wear this one. I don't hate it. It's pretty good. This is the e.l.f. Retro Paradise, and I was honestly just fascinated to know what blue lip gloss would look like. And it's not as good as I wanted it to be. Is it weird? Yeah. Is it good? Eh. Do I like it? Eh. Okay, it can go. Lip liners. I bought a bunch of them. I don't use them. Ever. Should I? Probably. I have a tiny mouth, and it would be really nice to, you know, use a lip liner to stay in the lines, but... I just don't. Somebody help me. Should I keep these and use them or should I just trash them because I don't use them? I don't know. These ColourPop ones suck, so those can go. This NYX one is fine, but it's really old. It's the only dark one I have. These two are basically the same color. They're Maybelline Color Sensational and please tell me those are different. They are 
the one of them is 110 purely nude and one of them is 130 dusty rose and I just don't think I need both of them. All right, I'm keeping two lip liners. That's that. These are my favorite things. My mouth is tiny. Do you see how tiny and little my mouth is? Bullet lipsticks are bigger than my entire top lip and require me to use a brush to put them on. So I really gravitate towards these tiny stick ones, the ColourPop lippy stick size. Um, Bite has lip crayons, I guess they're called. I've been trying to use this up because it's a cream formula and I don't like the color. I think I'm just gonna break the rest of this off and toss it. This is ColourPop Aquarius. I bought it because that's my birth sign, but the color looks horrible on me and it wears off after 30 minutes. This bite one is cute. This is Sugar Flower. I think I have it in a bullet that I got in a FabFitFun box. Sugar buns, not sugar flower. Okay. I don't wear it that often, but it's a really pretty color and sometimes it's nice to have a little shimmer. So that I will keep. The Slorac Pro in whatever color this is. I don't even know all the writing wore off, but something or other rose. I love this lipstick. This is such a good color and it stays on really well and it's not drying. It may still be dry to you, but I love this stuff and it stays on forever. It's basically the same color as this Bite one, but not shimmer. This is also Bite. This is the Acai Smash. It's a very berry color. It's effectively the same thing as this one. It's just whether you want a liquid lipstick or a crayon lipstick. So I probably don't need both of them. And if I was getting rid of one, I'd get rid of the ColourPop one because the reason I bought the ColourPop one is because I needed something this color. So we'll see how that goes. This is Glossé and it's, in my opinion, the greatest lip color that ever existed. It doesn't look like this when it's on. It looks very gray, mauve colored, very dark. But when I put it on, it is just perfection. I adore this color. This is also by, this is also one of their shimmer ones. This is a dark red. They call it molten chocolate. It's not very brown. It's more of a burgundy brown color. I like it a lot. It makes me feel like a dragon. There's this ColourPop one that's called Drip. It's the blotted lip. I've barely used it. I like the idea of the barely there color, but you can achieve that with other things. So that can go there. Gold Digger is more pink than I would like it to be. In some cases, it's a little darker than I want it to be, but it's called Gold Digger and I watch a lot of football, so. Parker is kind of the perfect nude for me. Jonas also has this color and it looks very different on them than it does on me, but you can see it's almost gone. I really like Parker. I love ColourPop's matte formulas. The Matte X is my favorite, but I really like their matte lipstick formulas. Um, Lady, this is a very dark red. That has utility in my wardrobe, because if you watched my clothing video, you will know that, as I said, dark red is a neutral in my wardrobe, so that's good. This is my favorite red lipstick. So this is the ColourPop, it's Matte X, it's called Trust Me. I actually have a backup of it because you never know when they're gonna stop making things. I love this red so much. This one's very dry and it's very powdery and once it is on my face, we are in a committed relationship. I have eaten multiple meals, had multiple glasses of water and taken a shower and still had this lipstick on. ColourPop Evil Queen, this is also a really good red. It's a little bit more of a blue red than Trust Me. Trust Me is really quite a true red. And then Snow White is a little more orangey of a red. They're all kind of the same, but they they skirt this line and I love the ColourPop reds. Those are both staying because they go with their sets. This is Tea Time. I thought this was gonna be too terracotta, too brown on me, but it's actually a perfect color. I love this color. This is like 20 year old lipstick, but it's called Luminescent and I bought it forever ago. And it was such a good color and I could never find a color that was exactly the right color. Until recently, when I went to the Bite Lip Lab and had them make me. So the difference is that one's a sheer and it's kind of shimmery and this one's matte. So I can get rid of that now because I have a replacement and she's lovely. The Sephora Lip Stories, I really tried to like these, but I don't. I have a pink one too. Glamot will take Sephora, okay. 
They can have the pink one too. This is the other Bite Lip Lab color I made. It's a very nice pinky nude. Seattle London, the most glitter. Let's just call this the most glitter. Um, it really truly does have that much glitter in it. It's a purple pink shimmer and it's got all the glitter and it's excessively metallic, but I have worn this in certain applications and it's very nice when you need it. I'm gonna keep it. I don't know that I'll wear it often, but when you need this lipstick, you're glad you have it. Tom Ford Black Orchid. This lipstick's so dark and it's so gorgeous and it's so beautiful and I never wear it because I save it to be loved and special and I am actually pretty confident I've never even opened this which means I should probably just get rid of it and sell it to Glambot, even though I'm like, oh, but the Tom Ford Black Orchid, what a beautiful lip color. But if I'm not gonna wear it, then it should go. That brings us to these two, Gerard Cosmetics. This is the purple one. This is grape soda. This is another one that came in Jonas's mystery pack. It's bright purple. Neither of us can wear that color. I'm gonna put that in the rehoming bin. This is Bite. It's a pink peach color. It's fine. I'll try it. I don't hate it. I'm gonna keep it in the box though, because if I end up not using it all year, then I'll get rid of it. We're down to five bullet lipsticks. That feels good because your girl doesn't wear bullet lipsticks. <sighs> Foundations. I've used up a few, which is great. This is the Fenty. Beauty Eavesdrops. It's not the right color, but it's good. And it's almost used up, I think. She can stay. This is the MAC Studio Fix Stick Foundation. It's almost gone. It's not cruelty free, so I'm not gonna rebuy it, but it's lovely. Revolution Fast Base. Why do I have two? Because neither of them is the right color. Jonas got one and hated it and their skin is warm toned and my skin is neutral toned, slightly cool neutral. So I have one that is too light. So what I have is this much of each of these because I mix them together. So I'll put on like two stripes of this and one stripe of that or whatever. And then it makes the right color. I have a new one of these that's actually the right color. I like this foundation a lot. I mostly only like it in summer though, it's not as good in winter, I find. But I'm gonna try to use these up and then I'll have one that's the right color and that'll be nice. Same thing with the ColourPop. The way I got this foundation, and it's my favorite foundation, is Jonas got it and hated it, but had it in the color Medium ADW, which just makes me look ridiculously orange. It's kind of okay in the summer, but still orange. And then I bought one that was light 40N, which is a shade too light. What I should have done was bought a cool tone because then if I had bought the equivalent shade level, but in cool tone and mixed it with this warm tone, then it would be the right color. But I did manage to kind of pour them together into this bottle to get it to be pretty much the right color. That said, I still have like this much of this one left. This is the original ADW, but I think I'm just gonna chuck it and keep the one that's the right color because I'm never gonna use the one that's too dark. This I wanted to like, but I just don't. I like the idea of like applying it with the concealer wand, I do. And I like the idea that it's concealer and foundation in one, although generally speaking, I like my concealer to be a shade lighter than my foundation. I, that's where my love stops. I don't really like anything else about this foundation. I mean, it's so good, right? It's like blue light defense, anti-pollution, cruelty-free, vegan-friendly, gluten-free, all of the things that I'm like, ooh, that's great. It's not the best foundation on me though. It comes off of my nose. It doesn't really stay on. I don't really like it. It's too yellow. They had so many shades that it was actually difficult to find the right shade. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer, which I just have a sample of. That's what's on my face today. For when I don't feel like doing a whole face of foundation, I may buy another one of these in a full size. We'll see how that goes. I don't know yet. That gives me five foundations. I'm gonna use the MAC one up. If I had to choose, I would keep the Pretty Fresh and the Fenty and not the Fast Base, I think. And I could just have the Pretty Fresh or the Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer, but I like the Fenty Ease Drops more than I like the Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. They're just, you know, twice the price. So 
that's good. Look at all that space I created there. That's exciting. What would be cool is if eventually I didn't have a whole drawer full of backup stuff and I just had the other stuff in here, but that's not happening. All right, tough choices. This is the Ace Beauty Paradise Fallen palette. It's gorgeous. I don't find myself reaching for it. I don't know why. It's beautiful colors. It's a really good palette. It's very saturated. It's easy to use. It blends well. It has a lot of good about it. I have really truly nothing bad to say about this other than you can't get that many very diverse looks out of it, but I never use it. Ace Beauty is a brand that Glambot will not take, but I think Project Beauty sure will take this because I think I've used this five times tops. And I'm pretty sure I still have the box it came in somewhere. This is from Revolution. If you watched my Revolution full face video, you will know that I liked this palette a lot. Reloaded Euphoria. This doesn't do anything that the palettes that I am keeping and use more and like better cannot also do. So and this one here too. This is old. I bought this in 2010 to do my wedding makeup and then really haven't used it a lot since then. It's nice because it's got everything in one. So eyeshadow primers plus blush plus two lip colors plus a cream eyeliner plus the dark purple and a white and a lavender. Beautiful, really. These whole kits were, but it's very old. So I think I just need to trash this one. This is also very old. It's sad getting rid of this because I've had it forever, like so long that I can't even remember. But this is Urban Decay. It's one of their very early days, nine pants palette. You can see I have it down, almost down to pan on many of the neutrals. And I love this palette, I do. I've always really liked it. And this was one of the first Urban Decay things I ever bought um, back when I was still really, really broke. And like buying Urban Decay was a big deal because it was so expensive compared to what I, I was buying and what I could afford. And I saved up a lot to buy this. And obviously I loved it quite a bit, but I don't even remember when I bought this. It's probably at least 20 years ago. Probably not safe to be putting on my eyes. I say as someone who's put it on my eyes within the last month. <sighs> this ColourPop palette, I bought this because of the name. Let's be fair, it's called Golden State of Mind. Obviously, I've used it and I've done a lot with it, but it's all shimmers and I just don't find myself in an all shimmers eyeshadow look. Or if I am, I'm just going to grab some of the singles that I have and put those on. So this is also going. BH Cosmetics Romantic Nomad. This is part of a kind of twin set in a way that they did with the Digital Future. And I love the Digital Future palette. And I like this palette, but if I had to pick between Digital Future and Romantic Nomad, it would always be Digital Future. The colors are nice. Like you can get a nice subtle neutral look. You can get more intense with the pinks and the violets. The green in here has never made any sense to me. I don't know why it's in here. It doesn't go with anything else, but that's still a good palette and it's still in good condition. I just don't use it that often. I did a whole video on this and you can see me struggling through it and it's gotten better somehow. I I don't know if I'm just used to using this or it's easier to use with time as it sits and absorbs some humidity or something, but it's better now, but it's still, you can really only do one look. Granted, that look is stunning, but you can really only do one look with it. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. These were tougher to decide on. This is the BH Cosmetics Love in London palette. I really like this. I had big plans of going to the 2022 Labor Cup in London and wearing this palette, but I'm not going to the Labor Cup 2022 in London because I've chosen to go to the Montreal Masters instead. So there's that. And also I really like this side of the palette. I really like that you can do a variety of pretty good and really interesting neutrals. And then you have these dark shades, which add some depth and dimension, but they never really seem to fit cohesively in whatever it is that I'm doing with this palette. And if it's just a neutrals palette, I have palettes that do that. So I don't use this as much as I thought I would. I love, I love the formulation of the shadows in this palette. Like the actual shadows themselves blend really well. The color intensity is really nice. I like this palette a lot in terms of usability. 
but it's kind of just brown neutrals. Really good brown neutrals, but just brown neutrals. And then I just have things that can do it that I don't need to keep all of that around. It's similar thing with this palette. This is the Maybelline Nudes of New York palette. Truly, this is a really very good palette. It does a lot of great things with neutrals and just nudes. It's if, if you were looking at the Urban Decay Naked palettes, this is a really nice combination of kind of the best features of all of them. It has some rose gold, it has some coppery tones, it has some darker browns, it has a variety of neutral mattes. I love the shade names in this one. I wear this almost exclusively for tennis playing because it motivates me to think your eyeshadow says believer, believe. Your eyeshadow says fighter, fight. So, you know, it's just like dreamer, creator, explorer, protector. I get a lot of inspiration from wearing the eyeshadows with these shade names on them. That said, I have this Mulan palette, which also has highly inspiring shade names and can do some of the same things and has the rose golds and the neutrals and some of the reds and browns so it is like undefeated warrior loyal brave fighter like a girl it's very nice i have often worn this as a similar inspiration while playing tennis this palette is honestly the only palette anybody needs to own the nyx ultimate utopia so it has all of these basic neutrals in there right and then i have the urban decay naked 3 palette so that's kind of taking care of most of the rest of it so considering the only time i ever wear this is if i'm playing tennis and it's purely because i like the shade names um, someone else can probably get more enjoyment out of that than me. I'm not sure Glambot will take this and I'm not sure Project Beauty Share will either because you can see that it's been used. Which is sad. I, if it comes to throwing this out into hazardous waste, I don't really want to do that. I don't think I'm going to throw it in hazardous waste if it comes to that, if I can't get rid of it somewhere because I like it too much for that to be its fate. This used to belong to Jonas. This is the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. Jonas bought it and then I convinced them that it was absolutely not the right colors for them. And it's nice. I like it a lot. I might be able to get Glambot to buy this from me. Some of the shades broke is why I'm hesitant. It's still in really good shape except for this Cancer shade and this Libra shade, which broke and are now almost gone. And it's a good palette. I'm wearing it right now, actually. I just have never loved it. And it takes up a whole bunch of room. Like it's very big. It doesn't travel well. It just takes up all the room on the shelf. I'm gonna put this in the Glambot box. And if they take it, they take it. And if they don't, they don't. That's where we're going. So here's what I have. That was half of my palettes that I got rid of. I got rid of 10, I have 10 left. Still too many, but here we are. This is the Nikki Tutorials one. It's pretty. And these shades are amazing. It's really the only palette I have left that has just bright, vibrant colors. That's why I got rid of the Revolution one because the Revolution one I got because it had bright, vibrant colors, but so does this one. And these are better and they blend better. BH Digital Future because it has the two greatest pinks ever and this purple and this blue and then just a bunch of basic neutrals. Good palette. Mulan, we already talked about that. That's a good palette too. I wasn't sure on this one. I really waffled on the Colourpop Villains Misunderstood palette. I adore this palette, but my problem with this is that I've always wished that there were like two more matte shades in here. It's mostly shimmers. You have this kind of basic beige matte, a kind of orangier matte, the white the matte white, the matte black, the blue, which really doesn't go with anything, and then a whole bunch of shimmers. This palette's really good for creating some very specific looks, but they're really good specific looks, so Jonas talked me into keeping it. I was going to get rid of it. That was probably a good decision. Um, if I'm getting rid of any one of these ColourPop Disney palettes, it should be this one, but I coveted this for a very long time and finally got my hands on it not too long ago. And I got rid of a lot of my kind of 
pink tone things. So I don't have a ton of things that do what this palette does. I don't dislike it. It's just redundant with other things. But this was a thing where I looked at it so many times before deciding to actually purchase it. <laughs> this is the only palette you need. It doesn't travel well though, so it's nice to have other things around if you're traveling. You know, what else can I say? It's got a bunch of colors in it. It's great. The shadow formulation in this is actually really good. I've heard a lot of people say they didn't like the NYX Utopia palette formulas. The ones in here, I love. I think they're great. This one's nice because it's an all-in-one, so it has eyes on one side and then cheek and highlight on the other side, so also really nice for travel. This one's a lot of greens and blues and purples, which are not colors that I have in other places aside from that NYX palette, which has everything. We're just going to exclude that one. So I decided to keep this one. This is also, I think, the newest palette that I have. I just really like this. Every time I've worn this, I've felt really, really good. My favorite selfie I ever took of myself, I was wearing this eyeshadow palette. This is also like the ultimate travel palette. I took this to Labor Cup and it had everything you could ever possibly want. Thank you for this, Urban Decay. I'm so glad I finally own this Born to Run palette. And then Naked 3, just, it's Naked 3. I love rose gold and I'm finding myself wanting to do more neutral or minimal eye looks more often than I'm wanting to do bold ones lately, so Naked 3 is really useful for that. I have to go through this. This is a mess. This is all my singles. I have a really hard time using single eyeshadows. I'm often like, oh, I need a whole palette, and I never just grab something out of this bag, right? I, I just don't. I don't know. I need to rethink I, how I'm approaching that, probably. Because I have a lot of them, and I truly like them. And I just never know like how to use them. Can somebody help me do that? How do I better incorporate these into my days? Help me use loose pigments. That's it. That's what I've got in makeup. Skincare and things like that are a lot more. Nail polish is a whole thing. Let's make that its own category. This video is already long. Let's do nail polish as its own thing. Okay? How about that? Does that work for y'all? It works for me. I don't feel like doing it right now. Thanks for our hanging out and watching me declutter my things. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. I don't know. Makeup declutter videos were like a big thing for a while, so I thought I would film it as such. All right, fam. Here's the makeup organizer now as it stands. Sorry about the horrible glare. It's the hall light. It's, it's dark in here now, so I have the lights on. But... We still have a lot of stuff. We still have a lot of backups that we may or may not ever use before they expire. I don't know, but it's definitely less. I don't, I can mostly close the drawers now. It still feels like a lot because of the head space I'm in, but that's that. Here's my eyeshadow palettes. We have 10 left. That's half. That's good. This stuff needs to get put back. That's my brushes. Um, here's what we got going on. This is the donate, sell, giveaway, or otherwise bag. It's, you know, that full. It's about half full of stuff. That's This is a lot. Um, I don't know what's going to be the ultimate fate of all of this, but for now, um, it's good. This is the trash... Hazardous Waste Toss This Bag, which is about a quarter full. And then this is the, like, trash slash recycling, just boxes and old packaging and things. Which will either be going in my recycling bin or will be going into my TerraCycle Beauty recycling stuff. So that's also, it's like a third full. So, you know, we've probably got, in total, a whole bag of things that are leaving. That's good, right? Yeah, we're good. It still feels like too much stuff, but when you start with excessive stuff, even half as much stuff is still too much stuff. It's a journey. It's a journey. We're all in it together. You're doing great. I'm doing great. Everybody's doing great. All right, everyone. Welcome back. How did you do? 
How was that for you? Did you have a bunch of stuff? to declutter or are you just kind of a person that's like whatever I don't even have makeup I own three things and I use them all all the time and I don't care I know people like that and I envy them let me know what did you think how did it go did you have big feelings did you not have big feelings did you come up with a whole, whole new super cool organizational system it can get expensive I did this last year where I reorganized everything so Thankfully, I don't now also have to buy all of the storage and makeup organizers and all of that. But it might be cool to hear from you all in the comments about your setups. Do you have a go-to setup? Did you already have one? Is it working for you? Or did you have to start something new? If you've got tips or whatever, or like links to cool stuff that you're using to organize your makeup put those in the comments share some tips share some resources did you find a bunch of stuff to donate and sell to glenbot or otherwise are you keeping everything because you love it and it all works for you and you're great i feel good i streamlined what i have there were definitely some palettes that i was like man i really like this palette but I don't use it, so clearly I don't like it for me. I think a lot of it is because I use the same palette for a whole week that if you can't get at least four looks out of something, I just get bored with it. It does one thing. It's really great at that one thing, but it does one thing, so I don't necessarily need this. I think that's part of it. I definitely had a whole bunch of stuff to go to Glambot. I have a bunch of stuff that can't go to Glambot, but can go to Project Beauty Share, so we're doing okay. I got rid of about half of my eyeshadow palettes and I have narrowed down my foundations to the few that I like. There's one that I want to buy that I really, really, really like, but it's very expensive and I'm not actually sure it's that much better than the $16 ColourPop one, but I do really like it. So I might buy another one. I need to think through like how many foundations do you actually need based on how your skin changes with seasons, which is drastically. And, you know, can you go to two and a tinted moisturizer? And then if so, what are they? Do you need different formulations? I, there's two different tinted moisturizers that I like and they're equally good to me, I think, but I have to think on it more. So we're still doing a little experimentation and I still have some backup in reserve products that I didn't get rid of because I was like, no, I really do actually want to try this. So we'll get there. We'll work through it. My goal is to try to consolidate by the end of the year into one of the little plastic pullout drawers instead of two. And that'll make me very happy if that's what happens. But I feel good. I feel like we did a good job today. You're doing great. We're all doing great. Leave your tips for makeup storage down below and don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the next video gets posted hit the notification bell leave me a thumbs up if you're liking this and i will talk to you in the next one bye